joins us now. Bob, how you doing? Michael and Don here. It's great to be with you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I, I saw a quote today, and I said, wow, this must make Bob Lee feel so great. John Skipper, who is the grand poobah of ESPN, said that you're the Walter Cronkite of sports journalism. That's pretty good, Bob. I'd go in for a contract negotiation soon. <laughs> well, we just did one of those. So that's not on the horizon. Uh, but so that's why I said humbling. it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> nothing to lose, nothing to gain. No, I was very humbling from, from, from John. And I think, you know, when it, 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 it's, it, it's a humbling compliment, but I, I think it reflects on, on the dozens and hundreds of people that I've been privileged to work with over 25 years. I mean, you see many of them, the men and women who report the stories out in the field to do all that, that traveling, the editors, the producers, uh, the executives, everyone, the researchers, the technicians. This this is a, a real celebration tonight. We're, re we're really proud of it. And unfortunately, with popularity, Bob, does come the corruption and does come the controversy, and you guys are always all over the things that sometimes are seen or unseen. You know, what's changed over the last 25 years? Has there been something that's more polarizing now that maybe when you first started a show you never dreamed in a million years would be so? Well, I'd say when we first started out, yeah, there was a lot of money in sports, but it was money in sports, and there was sports. It was an industry. Now, sports is essentially it's a culture. I, it's bigger than an industry. I mean, it is a global. It's a global brand. It is. It is just. It, it's grown beyond the digits. I think more so in the meaning it has to people, and in, and in that regard, that gives rise to many positive things, and also things that, that and, and we look at those things as well, and also uh, some of the negative things. Uh, it, it, the growth in the importance that we place as a culture and as a nation on, on these games and every and the, and the men and the women who play them is that's I think been the greatest difference. There have been so many stories that I'm sure you're proud of, but is there one or two that stick out in the 25 years that you oh, know you boy. really stick your chest out about, Bob? Well, I tell you, you know, you, it's like pick your favorite child, right? <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to leave happy. I mean, I, I, we were proud, I think, uh, in, in 1996 to, to look into the uh, sneaker factories in Vietnam. And, and uh, actually, 98, 96, we went to Russia to look at sports in Russia, their first Olympics uh, after the crumbling of the Soviet Union. They had gone in 92 as the CIS. We have been on the concussion issue in, in, in football since since 2000, 15 years ago, when I had a Super Bowl quarterback boast to me, boast to me how many times he'd been dinged. He'd lost count, and he was happy with that number. So much has changed there. Uh, the issue of gay athletes in sports, we tackled that one back in 1998 for the first time. I can remember interviewing a, a, a triathlete who had HIV and was still actively competing. Uh, race in sports, we did a show on the N-Word last year. We won an Emmy for this as far back as 1992. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, some of the things that, that are hard conversations to have, we, we've tried to get in there and, and open a dialogue on it and, and ask people to come along for the journey and think along with us. What I find fascinating about just, you know, sports and life is how our priorities change, the things that outrage us change. I know it's a tough question, but is there something that's happening now that you can just think, man, if we try to do this story in 1990, people probably wouldn't think it was all that big of a deal. <sighs> I tell you, uh, when you look at, and I'll talk about this tonight on the program with Tom Ferry, who, who's really dedicating his career now to the coverage of youth sports. Just the change. I talked about the emphasis and the importance we place on, on youth sports. It used to be uh, perhaps uh, the safety of the kids, certainly, but now it's, it's the values we place in it, the, 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 the ability to get something out of it for kids, and, and the entire pipeline question for these sports, the 29% decline in youth football participation in a six-year recent span. I mean, that's a troubling number, and that's a valid number from a, an independent researcher and industrial organization. And there's, a, there's, a, there's a major issue there. And of course, there's, the, the industry then has to try and, and, and recover and, and come back with, with teaching safer tackling and in terms of basketball licensing the so-called AAU coaches to try and get them into a, into a semblance of a code of conduct. All of these things, and, and that's where it starts when kids 8, 10, 11, incredible physical talents, never hear the word no, are out there competing, and, and the adults that are involved with them, do they have their priorities correct? That's a, that's a critical question. Talking to the great Bob Lee, he's celebrating 25 years outside, lines, outside the lines tonight at uh, 7 on ESPN HD. I, I, I always wonder when you have a show like yours, and I'm just going to put it to you, you're investigating a lot of people that ESPN's in business with. I mean, really, in business with, with big money, do you ever get a uh, shh, okay, back off a little bit because, hey, we don't want to upset the apple cart. We want these rights. 
In 25 years, Michael, that's never happened. Uh, it's it, we call it it's a church state separation, and the one guy that that and you've mentioned his name already in this conversation. There's one guy who's got his foot in both camps because that's at his pay grade and, and and goes with his his brief, his job description, is John Skipper. But uh, no, we've never been dissuaded from covering anything fairly, accurately, giving everybody involved in every story every opportunity to present their their views, their sides of it, and, and, and then report it. But, you know, obviously, uh, we do stories that impact on the company's business partners. But we've learned, I think, over the years how to, how to deal with that. It's never going to be a surprise to these business partners because in, in doing our due diligence, we're going to knock on the front door of that league or of that conference or of that school. And they know we're looking into it. And you involve, you, you, you just send up a flare internally. And say, Listen, on the business side, the programming side, you guys should know, coming next Thursday, when ends, Wednesday, whenever, there's there's a story that's going to be of some sensitivity to this party to that party. You might want to do some hand-holding, some consulting, and, and deal with your, your clients. And that's how we deal with it. Uh, and we, we've never, ever heard that, and I don't think we ever will. Bob, you were always somebody that, you know, was into soccer even before, you know, ESPN was all on board. I mean, how taken aback are you by what happened Sunday where 23 million people are watching women's soccer and just the growth of the sport in general? How about taking it back? Are you by how fast it's happened? It's it's astonishing, but let's not forget 1999. I mean, the numbers that were smashed included uh, the 1999 World Cup final, USA China. But I think what happened then is similar to what happened on Sunday night. Incredible athletic accomplishment. I mean, what Carly Lloyd did individually will stand all time in the pantheon of athletic events. Given the stakes and the stage, it, it will stand in a small handful of events as, as remarkable. But to extrapolate that every one of those persons watching, and I, nobody loves a sport more than me, but I'm not going to believe that every one of those people watching was a soccer fan. They were watching because they were Americans, because it was a, a proud moment. It was an event, and as the Brits like to say, uh, Americans are great event snobs. And I take that as a compliment. When something's important, we're going to be there. We're going to watch it. Maybe we'll learn about it. But I would not extrapolate that, that soccer is going to necessarily reap all sorts of immediate benefits uh, from what happened even both last year and this year because there are realities out there in the marketplace. But what happened with the Women's World Cup, uh, I was I – was, pleased and privileged to be with part of the 2011 uh, Women's World Cup, saw that firsthand in Germany. I have so many friends that worked on it at Fox uh, over the last month. They did a marvelous job, and I congratulate them from the bottom of my heart. They did a great job, and, and it's a business and a viewing and an artistic success. I'm thrilled for them.